Hey everybody, <clears throat> this is Jason Akers again with Green Acres Pest Control. And today I want to go over property managers, landlords, uh, you know, rental agencies. Um, the, what sparked this video was I, I'm a member of several different groups on Facebook. And one of the groups that I'm a member of, which is primarily pest control professionals, are in this group. Every now and then you'll get somebody that will slip through the cracks. And which I actually am considering starting my own group on Facebook for you guys to join where we could talk about, you know, bugs and different things. But uh, that's still in the works. I'll let you know as, as the videos progress. But um, while I'm thinking about it, if you if you enjoy this video, Think about hitting a thumbs up and share me around social media. I uh, really appreciate it. Helps out the channel a whole lot. And uh, anyway, I'll get back to what I was talking about. So, property managers. Um, let's say, now I'm going to use this specific example. This is not the example that was used on, on the, um, the group I'm a member of. But let's say you are a tenant. You move into a property and you're starting to pay your landlord or your property managers or whatever and uh, you realize after being in the property for a few weeks maybe even a month or so that the property has bed bugs what do you do um, you may have even signed an addendum uh, a lot of your newer uh, property managers have gotten wise to the uh, bed bug problem and they have written addendums in that basically uh, require you to sign away your your legal rights and um, so you you would basically be in uh, like in Virginia for example I stop rambling in Virginia property managers have to pay for bedbug control it's uh, a law all right so the way they're able to get around the law is they will have you sign a bedbug addendum which basically means within like so many hours or so many days or maybe even a week or so of you moving in, you have to discover the bed bug problem, report it to the property managers, and then they will take it into their own hands to eliminate the problem. If you do not follow that addendum, then outside of that, you know, period, uh, let's say the bed bugs take a while to, to get established or maybe they were established uh, they had done some pest control prior to you moving in, and so most of the bed bugs were dead, but they weren't all dead. And it may take, you know, two, three, four weeks, maybe even a couple months before you start noticing bites. Um, what do you do? Well, you pay for the bed bug treatment. And in fact, the landlord can evict you if you do not pay for the bed bug treatment. Um, they can take it out of your rent. They can force you to pay higher rent, especially if you do like an auto pay they can uh, garnish wages and stuff like that. Some of these addendums are pretty ridiculous as to what type of ability it grants a landlord to do. So understand that in most states, you do have legal rights that when you sign these addendums, you're giving up those legal rights that you have. Uh, now, they don't always hold up in court. There are some judges that will side against it. And they'll say, no, look, the law is you have to take care of it. You can't get out of that. This is what you have to do. So it's not always the case, but get back on what was going on. So now I'm going to tell you what happened in this group. This landlord goes in and he posts that he's found what appear to be carpenter ant, like, I don't know, sawdust or termite dirt or whatever because sometimes with uh, dry wood termites you'll get like pellets and stuff like that will fall out of the wood um, and he's got this picture that he's pictured and he says I am a property manager I am out of town uh, does anybody know what this is can you help me of course in my line of work I don't run into very many property managers that I like most of them abuse their tenants most of them abuse their pest control most of them won't pay a decent price for pest control uh, and so you end up with these slumlord type situations where the tenants are infested with cockroaches or bed bugs or spiders or whatever, mice, rats, uh, water leakages, all kinds of things because the landlord's not willing to pay to keep up the property. Now, I'm not saying all landlords are this way. I actually works for some really good landlords. In fact, 
all the landlords I work for are fantastic. They take really good care of the property. They treat it like their own home. They treat their tenants like guests in their home. You know, that's that's just great. You know, that's the way I, I honestly, that's the way I think it should be. But so what do you do? What do you do when you're in a situation where the landlord's treating you this way? Well, you could move, but what if moving isn't an option? Sometimes your only recourse is legal action. And I don't want to sound, a lot of these homes are, are you know, uh, poorer families, like, you know, people that can't really afford a lawyer. Um, but check. Sometimes you'll find that legal assistance is not that expensive. Some of these lawyers are even taking these cases pro bono, which means you don't pay anything. And they'll take care of you because it's a growing epidemic. So... Anyway, I hope this has been some help to you guys. Hopefully, this has put some light into property managers and where you actually have your rights. Um, so, you guys have a real great day. I appreciate it. And uh, I'll talk to you later. Thanks.